and I am Ankush. And we are from Vimtech with our team at Enod to interview Mr. Mohammad Anas. He is the founder and CEO of uh, Enod company which manufacture AI drones. Okay, let's start. You see, you have trust issues with me. Okay, honestly, I'm recording. Okay, uh, to kick things off, uh, sir, could you please share a bit about yourself and what inspired you to go into this venture? So I'm Mohammed Anas, I'm founder and CEO of uh, Anod. I am an IT graduate and uh, I'm very passionate about drones since my school age. I started my I started building first drone in school, seventh standard. I built first drone and uh, that doesn't function well. So I give it a second try in my eleventh standard, which functioned well. Uh, and uh, we pitch it to some uh, some exhibition. There I started working into the dimension. So that was the first time I built a drone. Actual drone which was flying on the table. And it was a complete, I still remember it was a transparent acrylic drone, uh, which is uh, sort of a unique thing uh, in a school to do. And then I got a lot of uh, good responses from people to get into this domain. And then I went into the college and I started getting into this direction. In second year, I sort of a, a partial dropout where I didn't went to the training, go to college regularly but mm -hmm. I started working in that startup. So I, I rarely go to college and I go for a full examination. The rest of the time I used to spend here. I graduated last year. Okay. Okay. So you are working on your startups? So before I graduated, my startup was valued on a half million dollars. That was a good time to graduate, I guess. <laughs> So I am particularly interested about AI drones. So can you please tell me about the challenges you faced and how did you overcome it? As AI is a tough drone to, uh, to me. True. So AI itself is a big field and the drone itself is a big domain. It is very hard to overlap things and uh, bring something innovative out of it. It is not something that I would opt myself uh, for uh, choosing AI for drones, but this is something that I have driven from the customer requirement. So when we look into like uh, what is there in the market and what are the needs and how can we fulfill that need with the promising things around, so I have come up here, there is a uh, edge computing capability which can, which can be leveraged into the drone industry, drone technology, which can change the game for a lot of things. This is, this is how we come up with an idea of utilizing AI in drones. And the moment we realized that uh, we started learning, educating ourselves first and then our team and finding the right people who can work in this. So, so AI drones are a lot of potential and uh, I what basically I want to know what are the potential market in what is in what is uh, targeting and also how did you came up with the name in you know? So uh, I'll take the second part first. How did I come up with the name in order? In order, like we, I have another startup. I started with a different name, Elite SPM. That was the first name that we have come up. And the idea is to educate people about drones because in college we don't have money, right? Yes. We really have money. We don't have uh, like few activities and banks. We just have few hundreds and thousands of these to start things, anything if you want to test. So with that amount, you cannot do much. But the only thing that you can do is to educate someone about it and you can train people, you can get some consultancy or some small training cost. Okay. So I started uh, educating all drones and uh, we started connecting revenue, we started connecting workshops, training programs. And that is how I become uh, like uh, a drone guy sort of thing. Uh, where people recognize me and I used to come to Greater Noida, some colleges are there like DTC, Delhi Technical Campus, some other in the college are like one of the colleges in front of your college, which is uh, Mm -hmm. and there as well. There are different colleges. So we started training people around it. And that is how I generated the I started making money. Now with that money, because we don't have like uh, we're spending that money in some years, we started investing that money into making some prototypes, some experiments. That can help us uh, you know, gain confidence ourselves that we can build something uh, advanced for the use of customer or any particular application. And then we can leverage it for the So the first name was uh, uh, not you know, 
The first thing that I started was the light design. And it was a OPC company, one person, private limited company. I started myself, there was no co-founder, nothing like that. But I learned a lot for light like, design. For like first year, uh, uh, like starting of my second year, I incorporated this company. But then I realized that there are things that can be done better. So uh, in the third, like fourth year, I think of creating a private limited company with partners, with uh, co-founders. And uh, uh, it's another story how I figured out my co-founder. So I got that co-founder and then we started thinking of a better name, better entity, better uh, brand name. Then we uh, did a lot of brainstorming. And there is a, a, a process of creating a brand identity. We, uh, we tried to follow that uh, process and uh, with that steps we have come up a lot of Post names. One of the name was Inord. And uh, Inord word is opposite of the B R O N E. So some people think that Inord I don't have any meaning. It's a like, word of name of Inord. Uh, but it is just we see very differently. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. see very different. so it's like we are going to change the perspective of the industry with this. And if you see the tagline of Abdul. It's a creating ease. Yes. Creating ease. So which means that the vision of the company is mentioned in the tagline. So creating ease for a phone. If you see the symbol of a uh, logo, it is driven from the, uh, the essential element of drone, which is a BLDC motor block. So it is a very small element, but without that, you cannot fly at home because it's a safety parameter. So it needs to be there. So this is how we driven everything in the Yeah, so could you uh, please share that how this AI drones can contribute to the defense sector of India? Defense sector of India. So there are a lot of potential application of drones in India. Uh, the time have uh, come where India has to just take lead uh, somewhere in utilizing the, this technology for the defense grade application. Uh, it is very easy to create something for a smaller application, but in defense, you know, the life is on which you cannot compromise with that. And you, you need to have a promising solution. And the solution is 10 times more complex than a, a normal solution that we create for any industry or a consumer market. So defense market is really tough to crack, and but it is a bigger pie. The biggest pie is in defense. So uh, uh, defense like, is uh, open for everyone, but it is hard to find. Yes. Everyone can reach out, but no one can collect. It's hard to find. Yes. We are still in the process of you know reaching to the right stakeholders, uh, doing the demo and trials of our technology with them, giving the pilot, uh, giving the pilot uh, sort of projects or uh, getting the pilot projects, doing some demo and trials with them. The idea is to help them communicate how can we solve their problems with our technology. And there are few things that they have already recognized that a lot can do better with its technology. So if um, you want to delve more into the technical capabilities of the drones, so what is the highest altitude it can reach? Okay, so as per the DGC regulation, in India you cannot fly drone more than 200 feet. 200 feet. Yeah. So this is the maximum altitude that you can fly at home. And if you want to fly beyond it, you need certain permission. But for defense, these kind of things are not there. No, yes. It depends on the use case of defense, how far they want to fly, how high they want to fly. So for some application, they want to fly for a kilometer of height or two kilometers of height. So these things can be done. Uh, like it is more of a requirement basis we can work on. It. So this is not a, like a standardized uh, practice we have opted to go out and only fly for 400 feet. Recently, we have delivered 10 drones to Kolkata government for the purpose of uh, pollution inspection okay. for the industries. So, inspection of pollution. So, one of the smaller products is their inspector light. So, the capability of a product is to detect the pollution in, in and around the industry area so that they can help in monitoring. Sir, can you elaborate more on the industry part? Which industries are 
in order to start targeting? So uh, we are primarily targeting the inspection industry. Inspection of uh, power line, gold mine, high power transmission line, thermal power plant, uh, warehouse inspection, where there is a lot of inventory need to be uh, need to be entered and inspected. So all these things. Before and not, there are companies already doing it. Why not come into the picture? There are cases where conventional bone can not function. Let's say any drone in the world can easily do an inspection of an open space. Yes. If there is a thermal power plant, any drone can autonomously plan a path outside using GPS waypoints and do the job. The moment we place the drone inside a power plant, the drone will start malfunctioning. The reason of doing that is high magnetic field interface. They do not have the capability of uh, sort of an AI pilot system which can create an accuracy or a localization and navigation system without GPS in the past. So this is where we are trying to take place. So as an entrepreneur, I believe um, finding the right team is the biggest and most important task for you. So what challenges you faced actually during finding a team and uh, how do you keep yourself motivated as entrepreneurs do face uh, failures? So what do you exactly do as a leader to you know, motivate them and keep them? So for us honestly the motivation is not really which matters we are doing for our motivation. Because if I am doing for a motivation I would have done something else. Like I would have done like my uh, parents are asking for the masters in the or something like that. PhD from somewhere, I go to London, this, that. I, I could have off that. Uh, I would be in a high motivated frame. But this is not for a motivation, this is for passion uh, of building something. And uh, the passion comes from like subconscious feeling. What you really feel for. You know, fall in love with what you do is very rare and only f like a, it is and I feel like I'm fortunate that at early stage I have found that, yeah. that, that that I like doing this and I can spend much more time into it. Like I have mentioned I can spend like days and days into things, not hours and hours. So uh, like for me the average working hours is twelve hours. Mm -hmm. So I have myself created an agreement for a company where I have to give at least ten hours a day. I have created the agreement for the uh, company, for myself, for my own company. Mm -hmm. that so I, yeah, for, I, for, you, for myself and my co founder, that I have to at least give 10 hours to the company. At least. At least, mm -hmm. at least for six days. And I used to work on Sundays for that. There is no day that. Whatever I feel like, if there is a genuine uh, requirement for an hour or two, I go out and fix that and come back. So, so, this is more like uh, what you do and love doing. Not like motivating. Sometimes you are really motivated when there are good results, and most of the times you are not. Most of the times you are not, because most of the times things are not in favor. And this is what entrepreneurship is, uh, because we don't have a driven wealth, we don't have a driven business. If there is some setup, and we are most of the time happy, and there are some bad problems. No, this is reverse. So we are creating something from the bottom, so which is very different. Like, you are you are buying a problem. <laughs> so sir, there is always a concern about uh, data detection. So how safe is this AI drones from data detection? The data detection. So uh, this data detection technology uh, works for a certain category of drones, for a certain uh, certain range of drones, and uh, uh, for for particular scenarios. Let's say uh, tracking a drone is easy with a with a with a let's say GPS based drones can easily be tracked. Yes. But if the drone is not emitting any signal, not getting a satellite data for some reason, let's say I'm saying we have created sort of capability where we can localize and navigate using vision based system, where we are not communicating anything with satellite, we are not localizing their data, which means that we cannot be you know traced. However, there are frequency modulation, like frequency utilization for the purpose of communication the drone to the user. This can be tracked. In some cases, you can upload the mission, close the connection, and deploy the drone. That is also possible. 
So these kind of things can not be tracked, few things can be tracked. And in our system, it is still in progress, in development, globally, not only in India. And there are only few things which are successful for antidote systems. Few things are not successful for particular things. So uh, normally, uh, normal drones they have a battery life of 15 to 20 years because of the high power motors. So what is the battery life of your engine drones? So we are also using the multi rotor system, which means that the power consumption is more or less the same. The average power consumption is like the similar thing. So we are getting the similar flight time, like 20 to 30 minutes of flight time for the multi rotor, which is an average thing in our industry. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Simply yes. Yes. So, so he is an advisor in our company. He is an ex executive director of VHA. So we won't take much time of yours. So as a college student, uh, we all like uh, most of us wanted to pursue entrepreneurship. So could you just give some advice on how to Okay, so I will I will give sort of advice if you uh, like not to uh, do it by like someone saying it or you have to do it, it is a subject or it is a matter of time that everyone is doing it. it is, this is not a FOMO, not a preparation or something like that. This, this is uh, like actually coming to you something, then do it. If it, it is not coming to you, you can give it a try, learn out of it. Don't uh, you know, push yourself for anything, not for, only for entrepreneurship. Saying anything in your life. Uh, it is not true for only one option. Whatever you do, don't push a lot. Uh, like there are things that need to be pushed. Like your will, your will cannot be pushed. Yes. But if you want to have a will or something, then push the efforts. Can be there, can be there, basically. But if you don't have a will, then push that. Because you need to find what you love. What actually love, but what uh, you are comfortable in doing. Something you are passionate about. Passionate about. Or you feel like hey, this is something I am I'm comfortable spending my time with. Please, you feel like it's worth it. So I, I give you an example. There are some people you sit with and you spend some time. You feel really good. No matter their friends, family, some unknown, known, teacher, anyone. There are some people you sit with them for some time. You don't feel like spending time with them. So this is like, whether you feel like spending time to this thing or I like do most of the things like uh, happily. This interview is like uh, entertainment for me. Like, it's like more like I'm expressing my thoughts and I'm not really doing, I'm not really working here. And I was not really working in the previous meeting. In any investor call, in any uh, client call, this is not really the work for me. Like I have to do a job sort of thing. I'm going to get you know marks for this or something like that, nothing like that. No one is getting a salary for this, no one is getting a promotion for that. I'm doing it for myself with most of my ability. I just wanted to improve myself every day. Uh, every day I come out of with a thought that how can I improve myself, my team, my idea, my brand. So there is no you know benchmark for me that today I have to do this much. No, there's no much for me. But uh, the, the last uh, you know, the, the moment I start feeling pain in my body, I go home to sleep. <laughs> so basically, you're accountable to yourself as well as your team. Yeah. So uh, I'm not uh, like uh, bound to be accountable for someone, uh, but we sometimes have people or open to people to understand our activities. And you can say that accountability, let's say Babudan sir. So I have uh, like onboarded sir to guide us, which means that they are somewhere you know, guiding us. So you can do this way or that way. He didn't come to me and say, I will guide you this way. I will let you do this, you will not do that. So we uh, you know, hire people, so help us improve. This is not a burden for us. So like it is not like mandate that you have to do this. It's open and flexible. Progressive, I think. Things are 
good, we can continue with that. If things are not good, we can think of something. Anything else? We are Group 7 and I am Isha Shavastava. The entrepreneur we chose for our project is Mr. Muhammad Anas, promoter and entrepreneur of Inon Private Limited with the tagline of Creating Ease. The startup is into designing and developing drones that are capable of operating in confined spaces without GPS and human pilots using a new cutting edge technology developed at Inon. The technology will create ease in day to day operations generating insights and taking actions that does not rely on GPS. Mr. Anas is 25 years old and has completed his engineering in the year 2021 from Guru Gobind Singh in the Trust University. He designed his first drone in class 7th which was a failed attempt but then after some setbacks he did successfully in class 11th. Then he decided to continue with his passion um, with a partial drop from college and worked full time on his dreams. Then, okay. After some time, he pitched his idea and got funding from IIT Mandi. Uh, and after that, was given an offer by IIIT Delhi to set up his office and work on his idea further. During this, all he collaborated with his old BTEC friend, Mr. Zen, and slowly added more and more people throughout. Well, the other promoters of an order are as follows: uh, Mighty Startup Hub, uh, Nividya Inception Program. IIT Mandi Catalyst, SolidWorks, uh, I am Koi Kode, IIT Mandi Hub, HCI Foundation, IIT Hyderabad, uh, Omira. Well, uh, Anus was simply into making drones, but uh, he did a market research and came to know that AI was the need of the art and something new should come into practice. Hence, he mixed both of it. He created AI drones. Okay, um, and um, then after. Well, these AI drones, uh, it would use GPS and could move in confined spaces as well, which will eliminate the time taken by other delivery ideas. So. We'll talk about some of the challenges faced by Mr. Anas and how he overcome that. Starting a business is expensive and AI drones are even more so. Mr. Anas needed to raise a lot of money to develop the drones, build a team and market the product. Apart from that, developing the technology was also a task for him. AI drones are complex machine and it took a lot of time and effort to develop the technology. Mr. Runners took a creative approach for raising his capital. He gave many presentations and got funding from IIT Mandi. He eventually was able to raise the money he needed to get the business off the ground. Uh, Mr. Anas was patient and persistent. He knew developing the technology would be a challenge, but he was determined to make it happen. He eventually developed a cutting-edge AI drone which was capable of performing complex tasks. Thank you. So, after interviewing Inod CEO, I feel the traits that are essential for an entrepreneur are as follows. First and foremost is motivation. As in the case of Mr. Mohammed Anas, his passion became his motivation. From his school days, he was really curious and ardent about drones. Next is innovation. Innovation is the most important factor in starting a journey of being an entrepreneur. Mr. Anas leads a team of qualified people. So, leading a startup requires a person with good leadership skills. And then there is optimism. A startup faces many ups and downs. Being optimistic helps in making through tough days. Last but not the least, decision making. It is really important to have analytical skills to take the right decision at the right time. For the growth and success of the startup, Hello everyone, uh, I am going to discuss about the broader impact of the venture on the industry and society. Uh, Anod Private Limited is a drone technology company 
that is making a significant impact on the drone industry and society as a whole. The company's uh, flagship product, the AI Pilot Drone, is the India's first AI-powered drone that can fly autonomously without any human interaction. Uh, here are some specific examples of the broader impact that a Nord Private Limited could have on the industry or society as a whole. The drone could revolutionize the inspection industry by making it safer, more efficient and more cost effective. The company's technology could help to reduce the number of accidents and injuries in the workplace. For example, drones could be used to inspect power lines and other hazardous equipment which would reduce the need for humans to work in dangerous conditions. Today, I, Srishti, will talk about what Mr. Mohammed Anas learned from his life. So, according to him, his biggest learning was how important is grasping the right opportunity at right time and how important is right decision making. So when he was graduating, his company valuation was 5 crore and he could have sell it to the, he could have sell it his company and move further. But he decided to keep his company and work hard on it. Now his company has gained higher valuation and also he is talking with defense to sell his loans. Hi, my name is Arun Kapoor and I would like to talk about how a startup is different from corporate. In a startup, you are your own boss. So no orders from above. You have to work by yourself. Uh, there will be no motivation uh, outside there will be no outside motivations like recognitions or salary you would have to mo be motivated by yourselves only and uh, in a startup there will be much more hard work than a normal corporate life i think these are the main key differences between them the different lessons we learned from our entrepreneur was that uh, we should do what we like he liked making drones. He made his first drone in the seventh standard and eventually worked on that and eventually made a company from that. Uh, he also told us that we should uh, not push ourselves too much in a single niche or a genre. We should be more flexible and uh, let the uh, work do the thing. Learn is our, uh, learning is our utmost priority. Uh, we should also expect failures. Uh, in a startup, uh, failure can be achieved very easily. So we should be... Also, we learned about the hard works and the risks that he took to make a company. And this will be it. Thank you.